So today we're going to be looking at manufacturing biodiesel. Now most fuels that you put in your car actually come from crude oil, they're a fractional distillation of crude oil. And often crude oil is contaminated with sulfur products, which means you get sulfur dioxide when you combust it. Biodiesel, on the other hand, is made from plant and animal products. It's made from the lipids, so it's stored energy in the plants and animals. And often it is a triglyceride. Now a triglyceride consists of a glycerol molecule and three fatty acid chains. Now those three fatty acid chains can be separated from the glycerol in a process called transesterification. Now that process, we require ethanol and it needs to be catalyzed with sodium hydroxide. Let's have a look at that process. We're going to be looking at using sunflower oil today. I'm going to start with 20 mils of sunflower oil. And of course, as always, you bob down to make sure that you're seeing things accurately. Now you'll always try and stop in time, but it never quite works because we've got such a viscous liquid in the sunflower oil, we need to go slightly over and then take out the excess. Okay, so I now have 20 mils of sunflower oil. Now I need to pour that sunflower oil into a conical flask. Now that's going to take time because of the viscosity again of the oil and we want to make sure we get all of it. So we pour it in and we'll just hold it in place for a moment using a little trick. Now we'll just wait a couple of minutes. You might want to go off and do some of your chemical calculations to make sure that you've poured all of your oil into your conical flask. So now I've got all my oil in my conical flask and I need to, as part of the transesterification process, add some ethanol. Now I can add the ethanol and it will take a long time to react. So I've also got some sodium hydroxide that acts as a catalyst for this reaction. So in this, I have sodium hydroxide in the ethanol. I need to pre-warm my oil because the reaction occurs best at 65 degrees. So I have a 65 degree water bath. And I'm going to put my oil in the water bath for about five, 10 minutes so it has a chance to warm up. So now my oil is warm enough. It's at 65 degrees in here in the water bath, I'm going to add just 500 microliters of my catalyst and ethanol. So I'm going to use 500 microliters. I'm going to add two mils in total, but I'm going to add it in small lots so it has a chance to mix thoroughly. So 500 microliters, and be careful, this is caustic. And I'm going to leave that in the water bath and just mix it and swirl it around so it all reaches the constant temperature. And then I'll add another, so this is number two. That'll take it up to one mil in total. Mix it round, keeping it at 65 degrees so the reaction occurs. Number three of 500 microliters. Give it a good mix. And last one, taking it up to two mils.
Now we need to mix that thoroughly and we need to leave it in there for about 15 minutes for the reaction to come through to completion. So it's been about 15 minutes. I've been swirling it occasionally in, at 65 degrees and it's ready to come out. Now I can just smell that sweet ester smell. You might have made esters in your classroom. I can smell the esters because what's happened is we have catalyzed that reaction. We have separated the glycerol from those fatty acid tails and those fatty acid tails have now uh, become esters and those esters are actually the biodiesel. So we've got it all sitting in there and if I left it sitting it would slowly separate out but I can speed up that reaction. And I can speed up that reaction by seeding it with extra glycerol. So remember in here I should have, if it's gone to completion, my fatty acid esters and I should have glycerol already there. But that glycerol is going to be mixed through really evenly. So I need to get all those glycerols to gather together and therefore they will sit to the bottom much faster. So to do that we'll seed it with glycerol. Now that glycerol is quite viscous as well. And I'm going to add two mils. I've got the marks on the side of my pipette. It takes time to come up. So there's my two mils is just there. And what I'm going to do is add it and it's going to swirl as I do it. And it might take a little while for it to all come out. Because as I said, that glycerol is really thick, so I push it out. Wait a little minute and get that last little bit of glycerol that's sticking to the sides. And I'm going to put it in my water bath again. Again, just to speed up that movement of molecules. Okay, I've got all my glycerol out of my pipette. Mix it around. And again, that glycerol is seeding the reaction. So it's gathering up all those other micro droplets of the glycerol bringing them together in a larger lump that's much easier to sink down to the bottom. Now I'm going to leave that in there for 10 minutes and then I'm going to bring it out and we'll pour it into another container. So it's been about 10 minutes. I've had it at 65 degrees. It's ready to start separating out. To do that we need it to settle and we're going to take a shortcut. We're going to pour it all into a measuring cylinder and our measuring cylinder, when it separates out into the different layers, we'll be able to read off the exact volumes of the different layers straight away. So I'm going to pour it in here. And you can leave that, you might want to use a clamp to hold that up to make sure you drain all of it out. And then we're going to leave it sit for about 15 minutes and then we'll come back and have a look at the two layers. So now our biodiesel has been sitting for about 10 minutes and it started settling. I move it out onto the white, you might be able to see. We've actually got two different layers. We've got our biodiesel in the top layer and in the bottom layer we've got our glycerol mixture. Now of course we, no reaction goes through to completion so we're going to have some unreacted lipids in there and that depending on how many fatty acid chains there are left depends on which layer that they might be in. But you'll be able to read off the volume of the biodiesel which is the top layer. Now we've also do this with different types of oils. So the number of different oils that you can do it with, you could do it with sunflower oil, which is what we've done. You can do it with peanut oil, olive oil, coconut oil, grapeseed oil, hemp oil and linseed oil. Now some of the other ones that we have done to show you, 
you can compare the volumes and you can compare the quality of the biodiesel that comes off. You can do consumption uh, combustion tests to be able to measure the amount of energy, which will give you some idea of the purity of the oil that you produce. Or you can do densities and you can compare the density of your biodiesel to that of the commercially available biodiesel. So you can plan the experiment. Now you know how to make biodiesel, you can plan your own experiment of how to improve the quality or the quantity of the biodiesel produced. Good luck. Earlier we made some biodiesel. Now's the time to check the quality of the biodiesel. And we can do that from the measuring the amount of energy output from a combustion reaction. So in here, I have my biodiesel. Just a very small amount, about 10 mils, put in here with the wick. To do all these measurements and to do the calculations, I need to actually get some mass. So the first thing I need to do is to measure the mass of my biodiesel, because I need to know in the combustion reaction how much of the biodiesel has reacted in the combustion. So I'm just going to write that down. And that's the mass of my biodiesel together with all the containers. Now I have that. I now need to know the volume of water that I'm going to be heating up. So first thing that I need to do is to tear the, re the mass of the can and then I'm going to add 200 mils of water. I need to know exactly how much water I've added because that's come important in my calculations. So I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. So I have now almost exactly 200 mils of water. And what I want to know is how much energy it's going to take to heat that up, that water up about 20, 25 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to drop my thermometer. It's not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to sit about the middle. If it was resting on the bottom, so I touch the bottom and then move it up a bit. If I rested it on the bottom of the can, then I'd be measuring the temperature of the can. I want to measure the temperature of the water. So what I have now is I can take my lid off. When I weigh it again later, I need to make sure I weigh that lid again. I can turn this on and the combustion of the biodiesel will start heating up the water. My measurements that I'm going to need for my calculations using the formula you would have learnt in your class, I need to know how much biodiesel was produced or was used in the combustion. I need to know how much the temperature of the water increased and then at the end I will weigh the, um, the end of the amount of biodiesel. So my calculations, the mass of the biodiesel, the temperature of the water and that will then be able to tell me, give me some idea of the purity of the biodiesel.